let's talk about deficiencies of complement factors. Some people have deficiency of early complement factor, speci especially deficiency of C3. If you have deficiency of C3, you have a tendency to develop staphylococcal infections, right, or gram-positive bacterial infection, especially in the sinuses and respiratory tract. Usually in USMLE they put a question like this, there's a, because it is inherited, they say there's a child who is coming again and again with unduly high frequency of sinus and respiratory tract infections and every time infections uh, responds very well to the antibiotics but again infections develop. What could be the reason? Is that right? There, there could be many reasons. One of the reasons is that baby may have deficient levels of serum level of C3. Because when C3 is not there, then of course you cannot make C3B. And C3B is the option N. You know C3B is option N. And if you have enough C3B, then against the bacteria, when you activate the complement, you generate enough C3B. And if bacteria are, this is a bacteria, right? If they are having lot of C3B deposited on them, this is for C3B deposited on bacteria. You know that neutrophils and macrophages have receptor for this is the receptor protein for C3B. So C3B on one side holds the bacteria and other side it holds the neutrophil. So that neutrophil can very efficiently phagocytose and destroy the bacteria and bacteria have no chance to escape. Right? And when you have low level of C3, you have a high tendency to develop respiratory tract infections of gram-positive bacteria. Then this is about the initial factors. If you have deficiency of terminal factor, terminal factor mean C5, 6, C5B deficiency or 6, 7, 8, 9. It means you are not able to make membrane attack complex or so any one of these is deficient or multiple of them is deficient. Then Mr. Abdul should be knowing what type of infection occur. Nazaria gonorrhea or Nazaria meningitis. For some unknown reason, they say that these factors are really required for destruction of Nazaria, gonorrhea, and Nazaria gonococci and meningococci. Right? Most probable reason is that those bacteria are better attacked by membrane attack complex. Is that right? Other immune wings don't handle those bacteria as well. So, if you have inherited deficiency of any one of late factors, then you are unable to make enough membrane attack complex and especially nazarial infections become very common. From here it reminds me of one more condition in which nazarial infections are very common and related with complement system. Some people have inherited deficiency of menens binding lectins. You remember I taught you in the last lecture there is menens binding lectins present in our blood and these substances bind with the bacterial bacterial menins and then these substances activate C2 and 4 there is no need of IgG, IgM and there is no need of C1 and that is called lectin pathway she knows it so well is that right? So some people have deficiency of this thing and lectin pathway does not work for some curious reasons again nazarial infections are more common in them so here are nazarial infection and here is also nazarial infections. And what are the infections here? Gram positive, especially staphylococcal aureus infection in paranasal sinuses and upper respiratory tract when there is deficiency of C1. Am I clear? So these three deficiencies are clear. Then C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency we have already discussed. That if C1 esterase inhibitor is deficient, which disease will occur now? I will not offer any dollars. Yes. Angio neurotic edema. edema. Thank you very much for remembering that. And then some people have deficiency of especially C2 and C4. They have inherited defect or acquired defect, chronic deficiency of these two factors. So in these patients, immune complexes cannot be eliminated. Let me tell you how immune complexes are eliminated. Because let let me correlate few facts. Fact number one is that people who have C2 and C4 deficient, they have a high tendency to develop 
SLE. SLE is systemic lupus erythematosus. Well, the very special point about this disease is the multiple autoreactive B cell activated which produce the autoantibodies against multiple tissue. What happens in SLE? Multiple B cell clones are reacting against your own tissues. There is polyclonal activation of autoreactive B cells. So antibodies are directed against DNA, antibodies are directed against RBCs, WBCs, platelets, skin component and so many other things in SLE. You can, best way to remember SLE is, I'm just kidding but it is true, you make a big bag and put a lot of autoimmune diseases into that and close the bag. The whole bag is called SLE because in SLE so many autoimmune reactions against so many tissues. Now you must scratch your own head, I cannot scratch because there are less here. If you scratch your head, you should come up with the answer why deficiency of C2 and C4 should produce more chances of SLA. Yes. Should I answer? Let me tell you. Actually, in all of us, every day there are a lot of antigens coming and antibodies react with them. And antigen antibody complexes form. These immune complexes which are regularly formed in most of us should be rapidly eliminated. They should not deposit here and there in the body. Because if these immune complexes get deposited into multiple tissue, they will activate the complement and produce inflammatory layers. Am I clear? That normally we are producing a lot of immune complexes. Thank God these immune complexes are very rapidly cleared. Because if they remain in our body for a long time, they deposit here and there and produce a lot of undue activation of complement system and inflammatory reactions. Am I clear? Now, first of all, we should know how immune complexes are normally cleared. Let me tell you. Let's suppose these are the antigen which is present in your body. Right? And these antigens are, let's suppose, present in your blood in high amount. Antibodies will come and bind with them. Am I clear? When antigen antibody bind IgG or IgM, their tails will become active and activated tails will act produ produce what? Yes, C1, 4, 2 and C3B. Is that right? Of course, 4B, 2B and 3B. 3B is very important. Why? Because it is option N. Right? So, C3B receptors are present on what? The C3B receptor present on phagocytic cells. Is that right? So, listen carefully that antigen antibody complexes may partially activate the complement up to what degree? C3B. And then C3B stick to neutrophil and macrophage. And neutrophil and macrophage rapidly eat up whole this complex. This is how normally physiologically antigen antibody complexes are removed from your circulation. Am I clear? Really? Now, if you have chronic deficiency of C4 and C2, can you produce enough C3B and this chain you can be produced? No. So can antigens be removed from your body? So antigens circulate for a short time or long time? Long time. And these antigens will inappropriately stimulate the immune system and multiple auto reactions may start and SLA like problem may start. Am I clear or just teaching myself? Really? What did I say? That what is the relationship between <laughs> deficiency of C2 and C4 and SLA? We should know there is some activity of this thing which eventually if it, that activity is absent SLA will occur. First we should know what is SLA. It's an autoimmune disease in which multiple auto reactions are going on. Multiple B cells are converting into plasma cells and producing multiple autoantibodies against multiple different tissues. That is SLE, basic concept. Of course, I will teach you in detail. There will be five hours lecture on SLE and pathology. But here we just mentioned that it is a disease in which multiple auto reactions are occurring. Now, what is the link between two? We'll make the chain. Actually, whenever there is chronic antigenemia, risk of SLE increases. When antigens remain in your blood for a long time, we call it chronic anti